Hey, how's it going, viewer? Are you a cat? Well, if you are, you're in luck because we're learning all about strings today. And if you're not a cat, hopefully you can just ignore that horribly cringy pun that I just made in the intro. Anyway, today we're learning about strings in Python, which is the next data type that we're learning about. So this is another type of object that you might use in Python, and it is Python's way of representing text. So when you bookend uh, a bunch of characters with quotation marks on either end, uh, Python will know to treat this differently, and that's how you define a string. And strings have special properties that are, are really awesome. And there, another name for a string in Python is a literal, um, which means that Python will treat the string literally or exactly as it sees it. And we're going to now dive into all kinds of operations that we can do on strings right now. So let's go right ahead and start playing with strings. The way you go about defining a string is just with anything, we're going to want to create some kind of variable. So I know we'll call it gravy, and we'll put an equal sign here. And to create a string, what you would do is you use either a single uh, apostrophe or like quotation mark, or you can even use the double quotes. Either one is okay. Python accepts both. I use the double quotes just out of habit because in C, the way you do strings is exclusively with the double quotes, so I keep it consistent. But single quotes, double quotes are potato, potato. Uh, they're both the same in Python. And then inside of these double quotes, you can type uh, literally everything, and that is because this is a Python literal. What the quotes tell Python is that uh, this is a literal meaning. This is not any kind of object that you will recognize uh, other than of a string, and then what's contained within the string. Uh, always treat it exactly as it as it is um, represented, which is why it's called a literal. So you can type words in here. So for example, I can put my name Kyle. You can put numbers in here. Um, you can even put, um, you know, really anything you want, punctuation marks and stuff like that. And this will always be treated as uh, just whatever is inside of the string. It's going to be printed literally. And I'll show you, like, what that looks like. So if I go to print gravy, uh, which is our string, it's going to print our collection of punctuation marks down here, which is just um, all dandy and great. There are a few different operations that you can do on a string. For example, strings support concatenation, much like what we saw last week with arrays. So what we can do is we can take uh, gravy, and uh, let's say we have another one called uh, potato, and these are two different strings, and we'll say, uh, we'll just put my name in here, and then we'll put uh, food is a new string that we're creating as the result of a concatenation from gravy and potato and you would use the plus sign to tell Python that you're concatenating these two. And then when we print food, what we'll see is that what it has done is it has just taken these two strings and smashed them together one after another, which is pretty cool. You can also um, you can write a concatenation onto gravy a little bit more efficiently using this plus equals operator, but this has the, the uh, difference of it mutating gravy. So gravy will change in this case um, whereas previously what I showed you is that gravy and potato are unchanged and we're just taking the food string which is a new string that we created which is uh, both of them. So even though the result of both of these operations looks the same on the surface they're doing fundamentally different things to the strings that are involved. So that's basically just how basic concatenation works. You can also do indexing uh, which is pretty groovy. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called uh, groovy and we're going to use uh, gravy, uh, which is that string that we have. And just like you would index into an array, you can index into a string. So let's say I want the second character, which would mean that we type a 1. Um, and then when we print that groovy, it'll just give us that uh, caret punctuation mark, just like that, which is the second element in, in gravy and you could use this exactly the same way as you would use with an array so this will give us the last element in gravy and uh, the slicing operator works on strings so for example if I wanted to print a reversed version of gravy you would use the, sli uh, the uh, skip with a negative one and you could do like all kinds of start stops and steps all of those uh, uh, fantastic fabulous things important to keep in mind that strings do not support item reassignment like arrays do so if I wanted to index into my gravy string and reassign the uh, fourth element to G I cannot do that as you see if I, I try to run this it actually yells at me uh, because a string object does not support uh, reassignment 
Strings do, however, support casting, which is another very useful feature that we saw arrays also support, but casting only works as long as the data types that you're converting between are compatible. So one thing that pretty much always works is that you can take a string and convert it into a list. And so well, we'll see what that looks like. So if we have, I'll make a new variable called uh, r or array, and I'll cast uh, my original string, which is gravy, as a list. And uh, so that'll convert it. And let's see what that looks like. So then when we run this, what we see is that it took all of the different characters in gravy and then put it into an array where each individual character is in its own index. This also works with tuples. So instead I can change this into a tuple. Um, and then this has all the same functionalities or restrictions as an array or a tuple respectively. This does kind of work in reverse, but it might not work in the way that you expect it. So to show you how this works, uh, remember that we have the original string gravy, which is now a tuple in the form of uh, R. And then what we can do is we create a new variable H, which is where we take our tuple R and convert it back into a string. And then when we hit print H, uh, what it gives us back is it looks like this, which looks like the same exact thing uh, that we saw before, the same exact thing as the tuple, except it's deceiving. Because what we've done is we've taken the tuple, which is this, and then we've turned itself as a whole into a Python literal, which includes all of these parentheses and stuff. So you see it, it works in reverse, but it, it doesn't do what you might expect it. There's no way to take this tuple and then convert it back into a gravy just simply using this string keyword here. So just beware of that. Casting also works between strings and numerical data types such as uh, integers and floating points. Although keep in mind that this is also very limited because they have to be compatible with one another. So what that means is I'm going to create a number object and I'm just going to set that equal to 5. So this is an integer object and I can cast this into a string. So if I uh, say ghost equals and use the string keyword to convert num into a string and uh, I'll print ghost uh, what that what that looks like is that now we have a, a Python literal of just the number five which is deceiving here because it doesn't actually show you the uh, quotation marks around it but take my word for it this is a string because then what we'll do is if uh, if I have another number so if I have number two um, and then we'll say this is a seven right and then uh, we'll have ghost two which is also or uh, ghost two which will also cast as a string and then we have a uh, num2 right and then if we try to concatenate these two now keep in mind that uh, num plus num2 uh, will equal 12 because those are integers so I'll show you actually just what that looks like so print num plus num2 and that should print 12 which you can see right down here. However, if we print ghost plus ghost 2, even though ghost is a 5 and ghost 2 is a 7, this will give us, watch this, 57. Uh, because these are not integer objects anymore, these are strings. And what it's doing is it's taking the actual string 5 and the string 7 and butting them up against each other to give you 57 instead of actually adding their numerical value. But what you can do is you can cast that back into a, uh, a numerical value so we'll say uh, val equals um, go as, as a integer we could say ghost1 plus ghost2 and that'll give us 57 back as a numerical uh, value and then we can say print uh, value plus 3 to prove that we've converted this back into an integer and this should print 60 at the very bottom and it does and that's pretty much how uh, the casting works between strings and uh, integers. This also works for floats. So, for example, if I wanted to say, uh, for example, float, um, and that'll give me 60.0 instead, uh, just as a decimal number. And keep in mind, again, that these have to be compatible. So if I had a, a string, uh, let's call this Henry, uh, equals 6e, we can't convert this into an integer. So, like for example, if I had uh, tried to convert this into int and take um, Henry, it'll yell at me because the six can be converted, but the e cannot. 
the integer caster doesn't know what to do with the e, so it just throws up an error. So see, invalid literal for integer with base 10. So that's something you also have to be mindful of, is that as long as your string contains purely numbers of the correct type, you can cast them back into a numerical um, value. But if there are any other characters, like letters of punctuation, it won't work. So that's pretty much how all of how casting works with strings. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my book. It's called Building Smart Lego Mindstorms EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.